Hi kids! It's me, Seven! Welcome to POF Kids Church! This is the fourth episode of our series called Creation. Anyways, before we go to our lesson, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video to all of your friends. Now, has this ever happened to you? You race to the bathroom and you do what you have to do. You reach for the toilet paper and it's empty. There's no more toilet paper on the roll. Somebody used the last of it and forgot to replace it. You look under the sink and there's no TP under there either. What do you do? You start calling for help. Mom! Dad! Anybody! We need the toilet paper now! My guess is when you call for help, you get it. There's always more toilet paper, right? And if you're ever in danger of running out, that's when mom and dad run to the store to reload. It's a good feeling to know that mom and dad will always come through, isn't it? Loving as mom and dad are, and as much as they provide, God is even greater when it comes to meeting our needs. True, God may not um, reach down from heaven and give and drop you a new toilet, I mean a new roll of toilet paper. But it's what, I mean, but when it's peace you need, or grace, or love, or something that you can't buy at Walmart, only God can meet that need. God provides for us just as he provides for the bird and the fish. Let's thank God for his amazing provision and all that he does for us. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're 
you have aquarium fish at home? Did you always have an aquarium or do you remember when mom and dad first bought the tank and set it up? If you do, you'll recall that you didn't bring fish home that first day. If you want to have an aquarium full of tropical fish, you have to take some time to prepare the tank first. You have to pour the gravel and set up the filtration system and fill the tank with water. Treat the water and bring the water to the proper temperature. Everything has to be just right before you can add tropical fish. That is if you want the fish or if you want the fish to live. The same could really be sad for the homes we live in. Nobody moves into a house before the plumbing. The electrical systems and the gas systems are in place and functional. You want to make sure you not only have power and lights, but running water and functioning toilets. A broken toilet isn't going to kill you like a poorly prepared fish tank, but it will make life unpleasant. Mm -hmm. We've come up to the day 5 in our study of Genesis 1. We've witnessed how God created the day and night and how He separated the waters and the sky and the land. We've witnessed the creation of plant life and the creation of the sun, moon, and stars. In other words, we've been watching God do all the prep work to put some truly extraordinary creations into this new world. That something extraordinary begins on day five. We're going to see God start to fill the world with life. Life that would not have survived two or three days before. The world was now ready for what was next because God had provided everything needed to sustain life. Hi kids, welcome back to Faith Sprouts and day five of creation. Let's count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Can you count to five in Spanish? Let's try. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Day five. What did God create on day five? Well, let's start in Genesis 1, 1. Do you know the memory verse? Let's say it together. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So now God has created the whole earth and now he's ready to fill the earth with life, with things that live and breathe. On day five, God said, let the oceans be filled with creatures that swim in the sea and let the sky be filled with creatures that fly in the sky. God created birds and fish, all kinds of birds and all kinds of fish. Let's see some of the birds and fish that he created. Well, in the sky, he made all kinds of birds that fly. Little birds, big birds, birds with all kinds of different colors and shapes. A little red cardinal there resting in the tree and 
black raven flying in the sky, a white dove, gentle birds, strong birds like eagles with big, long, majestic wings, birds that sing songs in the sky. Some birds fly and swim like ducks swim in ponds, but they also fly in the sky. Here's the little little ducklings following, following the mama. Following the mama duck. Can you quack like a duck? Quack, quack. Yeah. And beautiful swans that can also fly. And not only birds, but there are flying dinosaurs. God created dinosaurs to fly. All these birds that filled the skies and filled the earth. And he also said, let there be creatures that fill the sea. All kinds of fish, colorful fish, little fish, big fish. There's just some little ones, but let's look at some bigger sea creatures. Here's a whale shark to fill the seas. Here is a dolphin, a playful dolphin that likes to jump and play and jump out high in the sky and spray water. Here is a humpback whale. It's a, one of the biggest whales, a very big whale. They like to come up and do kind of like back flips in the water. God created all these amazing creatures and sharks going swimming around, finding their prey. Well, when God first created them, they weren't mean animals, but we'll talk more about that later. And what about even penguins? Penguins are interesting because they are birds, but they don't fly, at least not in the sky. But have you seen a, a penguin swim in the ocean? It's almost like they fly in the ocean. So God was very creative and made all kinds of different animals, just so many different kinds of creatures. Do you have any stuffed animals at home that are either a bird or a fish? Where do they go? Do they swim in the ocean or do they fly in the sky? Maybe you can find your own animals and that God created on day five. So let's sing our creation song all the way to day five. Here we go. God created, God created, dark and light, dark and light. That was on the first day, that was on the first day. It was good. It was good. God created, God created water and sky, water and sky. That was on the second day. That was on the second day. It was good. It was good. God created, God created land and plants, land and plants. That was on the third day. That was on the third day. It was good. It was good. God created, God created sun, moon, stars, sun, moon, stars. That was on the fourth day. That was on the fourth day. It was good. It was good. God created, God created birds and fish, birds and fish. That was on the fifth day. That was on the fifth day. It was good. It was good. It was good. I just looked down and saw I forgot this dinosaur that swims in the ocean. There we go. God created birds and fish, sea creatures and sky creatures on day five. Let's pray together. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for creating birds, all kinds of birds, and creating creatures that swim in the sea. You are awesome. I love you and I worship you in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. That is day five, and we are ready for next lesson, day six. Six. What did God create on day six? I'll see you then. If you want more activities and crafts for day five, click the links below and you can do some activities at home with your family. I will see you next time. I love you. Bye. God doesn't waste time, does he? He said, 
let's fill the oceans and it was filled from little shrimp and plankton to giant squid from lobsters and crabs to whale sharks and blue whales from little clownfish to great white sharks god made all the creatures of the sea the waters were ready to sustain life and god filled the tank the land and sky was ready to support life as well, so God filled their skies with birds. Everything from tiny swallows to giant thunders took flight, filling the air. God put everything in place so that these winged creatures could nest and live and eat, and creations took one more step towards completion. God provided everything the fish and birds needed to survive even before they existed. It's a good reminder that God provides from all creations, including us. God wants us to have faith in Him and not worry about tomorrow or about things that are uncertain. As sure as God provides for the clams, the sharks, and the eagles, He will provide for us. Our memory verse for the week is found in Philippians chapter 4 in verse 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Hanging out with parents, make this week's lesson real. If you have an aquarium at home, take some extra time to watch the fish with your kids this week. Or go outside and look for birds in your neighborhood. Ask the kids how watching birds and fish can remind us to trust God for the things we need. Hi kids, it's me Seven. Guess what time it is? It's trivia time! For this week, we will have our five-day review. Ready? Okay, great! Alright, question number one. What did God create on the fifth day? Tell me your answer, kids! Now to lock in your answer, I want you to say Amen! Alright, the correct answer is the fish and the birds! Question number two. What did God create on the first day? Alright, to lock in your answer, I want you to say, I mean, I want you to give me a thumbs up. Alright, the answer is day and night or light and dark. Question number three. What did God do on the second day? Alright, I guess that's your final answer. It is separate the sky, and the waters. Question number four. What did God do on the third day? Okay, the answer is create the land and plants. All right, question number five, and it's our last one. What did God do on the fourth day? Oh, I'll give you a hint. You can see it at night and at day. Okay, the answer is create the sun, moon, and stars. That's all for this week's trivia. Bye, kids! Here's a craft idea for you. Have the kids make birds or fish out of foam craft pieces or construction paper. Let these creatures be a reminder that we do not need to worry. God will provide for us. Does this message sound familiar to some of you who have grown up in church? It should. Jesus taught a similar message in his very first sermon. Let's jump ahead to the book of Luke to see what God says about the birds. God put a message in the skies before the first man ever drew breath. Hmm, look at the birds. Do they look worried? Are they concerned what their next meal will come from? They know that God provides and they do not worry. As Jesus says, how much more valuable you are than these birds? If you don't know how much more valuable you are than the birds, I'll remind you. You are so valuable to God. 
He sent His only Son to die for you. Jesus took your place on the cross to pay for your sins so you could have eternal life. God loved you enough to provide heaven for us, even when we did not deserve it. There's no need He does not know, and there's no need He will not provide. <laughs> God knows what we need before we ask, and He knows when we need material things, and He knows when we need spiritual things. He will hear our prayers, and He will give us what we need. We don't doubt. We don't have to doubt. We don't need to worry or we don't have to worry. Have faith and God will provide. The next time you feel worried about something, look at the skies. Look at the birds. Or if you prefer, look under the sea. God will provide for you like He does. The mighty blue whale and the tiny hummingbird. Have faith and know that God will provide all you need. Alright kids, it's almost the end, but first let's close with a simple prayer. Close your eyes and bow down our heads. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for all that you do with us. In Jesus' name, Amen. And that's all for this week's lesson guys. Thank you for sitting with us and listening God's word with us. I know that next Sunday you'll be there again with your friends, your family members, and whoever you want that you want to invite and who you ever want to be saved and know Jesus in their lives. So again, guys, kindly like, subscribe, and share to our POF Kids channel. See you again next Sunday. Goodbye!